let's start the demonstration. So in today, this demonstration, the, we will study the map radius filter and the way the function programming works with big data. So we will start with small examples and we'll move on to the complicated examples throughout this demo. Okay, and I'll start with Scala. Right. So first I will show you. So iterate example of iterate. Usually if you have list arrays, tuples and so on, we want to iterate through the content to manipulate it. <coughs> Let's create a list, for example, list. Uh, called uh, L, which has few elements. So we have a list called L, right? So now, Assume we want to manipulate each items in the list simply. I would like to print each element on the list. So then I have to iterate through the list. For that, we can use a function for iterate. So I will create iterator for IT. So I need to get iterator out of this list. So to that, I can call L to iterate method. So I iterate method. Fine. So then I, I will get a value for it that links to the iterate, uh, iterator function of the given list L. So if I want to print all elements in the list, I can use the iterator that it says has net. If there is any item has has nest, do what I want to print a length each item, I say next, and close the value. So you see, it print every element in the list. If I want to multiple elements on that, I can start iterating, and then start while loop. And multiply elements by two, so like that, and then print elements. So iterator usually used to print uh, iterate the uh, list like data structure. Okay, assume we have the list called L and I want to create another list by doubling, multiplying each element in that list. What should I do? So for that, I have to create another list called L2. Maybe variable L2. Type of that list is integer. And initially, that is empty list, right? When I say L2, it's empty. L1, 
L. List L has some elements. L to be same. What I would like to do now, multiply all elements in the list L and create a new list called L2. So the elements of L2 should be then 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. How can I do that? I have to do is I write a while loop. First of all, I have to get an iterator of list L, and then I start a while loop. Pass it. And then I do, I say L uh, 2 equal L 2 run plus I T next. So that add each element uh, after multiplying 2. We, I take I T next to take every element in each iteration. And I multiply it by two and add to add to the L two. Right. So when I see now L two, you see it is a list contain the number two, four, six, eight, and ten. <coughs> Every time I want to kind of do some operations to the element in a list and create some other list, I have to do those steps. Create a iterator and in the while of follow, I have to kind of do the operation and then add to that. How about we instead of doing that, we the functional programming languages provide very interesting function to do all these things in one goal, in one function. That's cool. Yeah. For instance, I can create L2 without any while loop or whatever, but I can say directly variable L2 is equal l1 map and all these things in the while loop i can see like that it map every element multiply two sorry i, I have I don't have this call l1 it's l this is l l map underscore means every element multiply two Directly create a list called L2. So you see, map function equal this. Without writing this again and again, functional programming languages uh, created, sorry, created functional program without writing these uh, while loops, functional programming language created a very interesting function called map. Map take other operation or the other functions as an input and apply to the each element. I will show you that. I create a, this called maybe L1, which has few items, three, six, like that. Assume I want to multiply each element on this list or I want to kind of um, add five to each element on this list. I can do that directly. So I can create uh, maybe a list called L2 in L1 map underscore means every element plus five. That means map function take this here scholar fun functional literal 
and apply that to every element and create a new list. Now L2 has 8, 11, 7, 12. So add 5 to each item and create a new list. So we don't need to use iterators or while loop. Just map, we'll do this. So, so these things here we pass to map function for the operator, uh, functional literal. So we can write functional literals as anonymous functions or kind of like here. We can write a functional literal. Like maybe, uh, let's say, we want to apply function f1 to this each element in the list. I can create a functional literal, something like here. Function f1 is a function which take integer as input and it transform to x plus 5. So I create a functional literal or the anonymous function f1. What this f1 take each parameter, input parameter, add 5 to it. So for example, if I, if I pass f1 2, it should return 7. So then we can pass that to the map function. Like here. A1 map F1. Then what happens? This F1 function apply to the every element on the list L1. So our list L1 is this. So it add five, you see, to each element. So like that, we can create any function. Maybe like here. It's a function F1 is now multiply uh, input by 5, so that is a functional f1. You can apply this functional f1 to the list l1. So it's create a new list. So that list is basically multiplying each element of list l1 and it creates a new list. So you see it's map function is very comprehensive abstraction where we don't need to do any iterators while loop or whatever. We can use in map function and apply any functions to a list or similar data structure, list arrays and so on. Similarly, there is a very other interesting function it has called field. This is our list L1. So assume we want to pick only even numbers from this list and create a new list called L3. So in L3, I want to create a list called L3 by taking the elements which satisfy some condition. So my example condition is even numbers. I want to get even numbers from that and create a new list. So for that, I can use a function called filter. In the filter, I say every element. So I will do it in more meaningful way. So in the filter function also take a function input. So first of all, I have to create a function. So I will create then function f2 that take uh, and transform to the Boolean value based on this x. I take x, let's say x modular modular two equal zero is my 
condition. Then what function f2 do? If the function f2 if I ask 10, pass 10, it return true. So if I pass 9, it return false. So function f2 is a function which take an input and return true with that input is true. Even number, it return false, if that input is odd numbers. So we can pass this function f2 to our list using filter to filter out even numbers. So for example, I create a list called now L3 by filter elements by using function F2. So you see, now my list L3 has picked my list L1 has these numbers. Now L3 has only the even numbers fit. So this, just this filter method, just do that. So in order to do that, you know in the traditional programming languages, we have to write a lot of words, loops, and things like that. We don't need anything, just call the function filter with the passing the filtering function to it. So filter function will filter out the image. So very interestingly, there is another function available called radius. Let's see how the radius function works. Radius function tells the system how to reduce or how do we kind of reduce the elements. So for example, let's say I want to add all elements in this list. So for that, I maybe create a function called F3 which take two integers as input x and y and transform to a output called x plus y. So then function f3, you know, when I pass two items, it will add these two together. So we can apply this function f3 iteratively to the elements in the list, starting with initial value zero. So that we are using a function called radius. So I create now my list L. Uh, I create maybe uh, I want to create a, I want to get an addition on the list L1. So I create a variable called total length. That is L1 reduce and pass function F3. So you see, it gives me the answer 18. So the system apply function F3 first with the initial value of 0 to the first element. So x taken as here 0 and the here taken as 3. 0, 3 answer is 3. So then there are 3 passes here with a 6, 9. And then 9 passes here with 2 like that. At every element. So instead of writing like that, creating an anonymous function f3 and passing like that, I can write an anonymous function directly here. Something like that. We do the same. So here it says take two inputs x and y and transform to x plus y. So like that, I can pass the anonymous function directly into the radius method if I wish. Or else, I can write this as the anonymous or the lambda function 
right here and pass F3 to the radius meter. Oh, that's how radius works. So I want to assume multiply all elements in this list together. So where I do L1 radius, uh, take X and Y and then multiply each two. So it's the, the multiplication of each other. Similarly, function and programming has very interesting other method called fold. Fold method, using fold method, we can put a initial value. So for example, so you know our function f3 is this. Take two inputs and basically add them together. So this is our function f3, function f3. So uh, the reduce method start executing this function on top of each element with the initial value of zero. With the fold, we can add any other initial value. So for example, I can say here total n1 fold, maybe with initial value of zero, and then pass function f3. So you see, we get the same result because reduce is the four method with initial value zero, basically. So maybe we can pass any other initial value. So for example, I can take pass initial value two here. So then four produce 20. Because it take two as the first input and then apply the function to the two and the first element and the result will take and then apply the function f3 again with the result and the next element and so on. So that's how it works. Reduce works in a similar way, but initial input to the reduce is zero. So you see I got this the reduce that multiply each element. So if I want to do the same with hold, so which number I should pass in? Actually one. And then we need to tell x, y transform to x multiply y. So I get the same result. So if I pass zero, you should understand to the whole, we get zero because zero multiply any item is zero after that everything is zero. Okay. So that's how fold works. Similarly, using reduce, can we can apply any other functions, not only mathematical functions. Like for example, if you want to uh, get Uh, the minimum item in this list, I can use the reduce for that. I say take x and y and x and y and transform return me x minimum y. Transform not equal take x and y and transform to x minimum y. It returns me, and this is my list here, it returns the minimum item on this list. Similarly, if I want to get maximum item on the list, I say and reduce x and y and say max. So it returns. You see, reduce is very useful functions, function which we can use to do various things. So assume, let's take a real life example and use this 
field uh, and those methods such as radios and so on. So in order to understand the real life application, I would like to write a function called is prime, which tells me whether the given number is prime or not. I do it step by step. The algorithm I want to use for that is what I would like to do when when it take uh, any input parameter x, I would see whether x has any factors. If it has any factors other than one, you know it is not a prime number. If it is, if don't have any factors, then I am sure it is a prime number. So I would like to do it till. I would like to see whether it has a factor from two to square root of this given number, you know that, right? Instead of writing while loops and so on, I, I would like to use filter. A filter function uh, to implement it. So here I am implementing so I'll take uh, uh, what I would like to get it, uh, lambda function called is prime, which take any input in and want to transform some Boolean value, which is a prime number. So I, first of all, in order to do that, I want to create list of numbers from two to two to maybe math square root of even n and I transform that I I uh, to int. is q r p right so if i call this prime number now let's see what's happened with 10 generate two numbers two and three so if it is maybe hundred it's two three four five six seven eight nine ten number range so this will create a number age two to the square root of even number so when i call is prime so now it's actually not re returning me whether this given number n is prime or not instead of it returns me the number age right so now what i would like to find it out whether any of these numbers is a factor of given n so for that, I kind of use a filter function, apply filter function to this range. For that, what I would do, I modify this function by applying a filter function to this range because this is return range. So I inconsist and apply filter function to that. What it returns, I apply filter. What should I filter with the numbers? Any access which, what should I return is actually any of these is a factor of the given number. For that, I say, like, maybe I can say like this, uh, if, any x transform to if n modular x equal to zero. So I take every element x using this filter function, take every element that is x and see whether that x 
take n which is passed as here n module x and check whether it is zero if it is zero it's a factor so i take this list so now let's call my is prime number with 100 now it returns a vector which has the numbers only the factors of 100. So you see, when I call it with maybe 30, now it returns the factor of number 32, 3, 5. Fine. So what I would like to get is a prime number, true or false. I want to see whether given n is a prime. I don't want to return factor. So I want to return boolean then. So I then to determine whether this given n is a prime, then what should I do? So I apply a size method and see whether if that size is equal to zero. So now I have a function which returns boolean. So when I apply this function to the 30 now, it says false because 30 is not a prime. 30 has this list, some factors. So when I pass 90 into that, it returns true because if 19 may not have any factors, because of that, this vector size is zero. So it's returned true. So you see, this is very interesting functional way of implementing is prime. So this is the, my final version, is prime. Functional way of doing uh, determine a prime number. So there what I do, generate two to the square root of given number and get a kind of list, actually range, and filter the numbers in that which is obviously a factor of these numbers if that list is empty it is a prime so so you see how built is this functional programming is so we can pass any number to see whether uh, sorry is prime prime to this lambda function to see whether it is a prime or not this function is false this is not a prime maybe i try this it is a prime it is a prime number so we don't need any while loop for whatever to do functional way of implementing so you see if that filter function is correctly implemented if this kind of two to match as root is correctly implemented my is prime is perfectly correct so all right so in the list like data structures in case i want to generate a random number list in particular range. I can use uh, util random next int a method of uh, Scala. So maybe I can, let's say I want to create a random number uh, less than some value. For that I can write anonymous function for random. that take an input and transform it to a scala util random and pass this x. Random next, next int. So then my random function, my past 10, 
it will return me a random number which is less than 10. So when I pass 1000 to that, it returns me a random number which is less than 1000. So that's how we can generate a random number. So, so assume we want to create now a list which automatically fill with some random values. What can we do that? So maybe I create a list called L5. In order to automatically fill the list, there is a function called fill available. So I say fill, maybe five elements in this list with the uh, random numbers less than thousand less than sorry i made a mistake random so you see it's created a list which has five random numbers which is less than thousand so my logic is i create an anonymous function random which generate any random number pass that random function to the field function. So here you see again the principle of current use. So I say field file, it is on another function in that I pass the number generator. So using this, my number generator function, system will generate numbers and pass to field and it automatically fill number of given items. So if I want to have like a 50 item list generate like that right so now assume we have such list we want to get the addition of entire numbers so you know what to do i call reduce method my function f1 is uh, maybe i directly call this is list 5 ready take x5 transform to x plus y so this is addition of entire number in this list so assume we want to get then not only addition uh, average so we want to pass a list to some function as in for stat and then want to get it some plus average of this number as a tuple. So, so in other words, I want to have a function called step and which pass a integer list for it, maybe call x list of list of int. And it need to transform into the tuple. First element should be in other element double element. Right. Okay. So so first I would like to, first element is, so I have now a function, I, first one I would need to calculate sum. So that is actually the list here, actually x. So I say x, ready, ready use. Take x and y, transform to x plus y. Then what I want to do is x reduce 
x and y in transform to x plus y so divide x dot size this will ready take the sum this will take the average sorry okay this is i think should transform Sorry, I have to write like that. My stat function here take a stat function here which take a list of integers, right? Then it transform to double a tuple that is total and the average that equal to that equal to a function and which take an input x maybe I take L here L list an int an int transform to now I give this L no L reduce x y x plus y so here x actually I use L, otherwise the entire function will get confused. Hmm. Y. In double equal L is the list, integer list, transform to So this L reduce x y L reduce sorry back at one back at this machine L reduce x y to x plus y and come on the next element is this y. At least, so I don't need it. Still not work. Why? In double and take at least. Ah, uh, this is not x. L reduce x y to x plus y. Then L reduce x y to x plus y divide L size. This size. Right, so now I have stat function. So this stat anonymous function, I can pass any list now. It'll be my list L5, it returns me the addition and the average of this list. Similarly, I can pass list L1, so it returns me the addition of numbers in that list and the average. So you see how simple it is. But writing a function, maybe you feel complicated. But after that, it's works straightforward. So as you see, my stat function a little complicated. It's defining the stat function, and then it cares about the input uh, output input and output and then I put equal and then find function. Stake list input and transform to this. So I wish I can 
try to simplify version here. So the shorthand version here is directly like that value. Step equal without defining it. I say I have uh, one into parameter that is list of integers right then it transforms to a tuple first integer first return value is integer and the next return value is double and that Right. Transform to the integer and double value. Right. That is equal to a two part L values X. Transform to x plus y and n values x y transform to x plus y divide n times. So I repeat. So this is the long version of the function step. So maybe for you it's kind of really complicated. Uh -huh. So let's build this stat function which returns its sum and the average in a much simpler way, slowly step by step. So for that, I create a function called stat equal. I take this function, take the one parameter L, it is a list of integer right then transform it to let's take the uh, addition first so i use reduce method for that is a reduce any x and y transform to x plus y Now this stat function is actually this. Now I call stat with list L, L5. It returns the addition. You see it returns the addition. So I now I want a tuple with addition and average. So this is addition. Right now I need a tuple. First addition and then average so i say in order to get average i pass x and y back for my reduce function and transform to x plus y and then divide into list of size Maybe I transform to double to get the double as in this. 
sorry, by one by that is this. This is plus, then I call reduce method. Divide the size to the double. Right. So it returned the tube. Now I pass my step with list L5. You see, same result. So this is the simple way of doing stat function, take the input list and create the addition here and create the average here using reduce method. Similar thing, if we want, similar thing we can do with map using map and reduce together. How can you do this? Right here, let's try a little bit. Let's try to use map and reduce together to get the total and the average. So we create this stat function step by step to understand. So first of all, in order to get the addition, I do some other trick map. So there are what I do actually, I will show you, I create a function, let's say F9. So that take a list integer as input then transform to L map what I do now is each x I transform to a tuple x1 so what that function really so we can see, we can apply F9 function to our list L1. So my list L1 is this. So I have a list called L1, this. So this function tells using map to take each element of this list X and map that to a tuple called x1. So you see, so it creates a list of lists like that, list of tuples like that. So instead of list three now, when you apply this function f9, what's happened? To get three one, six, six one, two, two one, and then seven, seven one, like that, list of tuples. So this list will transform to the list of tuples using this F9 function. They are use map for doing that. So how can I get this addition and average using this list of tuples? So use usually in the tuple, now I have list of tuples. So let's write my function stat again using this method. So there, I want to get a pass, uh, create a stat function using this. Right. So I pass. Uh, list here type in and then I transform to what I want is list of, list of tuples 
So if I add now F9 to this, and so what happened? Now I call stack with L1. returns the list of two. So for that now, I want addition. of every element in this list of tuple. So for that I use reduce reduce function. So in addition means I need to add this together. So first element of the tuple basically refers to dot underscore one. So then I say x and y transform to x dot underscore y plus y underscore one. X, Y. Moving seven. Let's see. Hmm. Let's, let's clear the screen. Um, carefully have a look. What's happened here? Let's repeat. So we wrote a function called F9, which transform a list to a list of two. So then when you call F9 with list N1, create a list of two. Using this list of two, well, now let's see how we can write our stat function. So let, let's try. We have the stat equal, which take a list as input integer list, as any input value, uh, list has an input value, then I transform to transform to this. You say L map instead so of F9, I directly write that. In the F9 function, what I do, I take X. 
plus one two x one. This is a list of tuples. So that can now reduce to this. Take two elements in this tuple list now and then take the first element of x add to the first element of y and then what I say please add second element of x to the second element of y like that so then I call set function with list L5. So you see what I get is the addition and elements. My list L5 had 50 elements. You remember. If I call it with L1 here, my example, return 18 and 4. Because if I separately add this using x1 plus y1 we add this right and then here in the next tuple y what i add is x2 plus y2 these one all of these are ones we add all we take number of elements we add those second elements together take number of elements we add first element together we take addition of each element so you see now, I return, I got it, a tuple, sum and number of elements. So what I want is basically sum and the average as the second. Average as the second element. Right? So if I want to take uh, sum and the average, basically what I should do is sum should divide by the average, right? That's what I need to do. So they are, this is, this function, you know, to return a tuple, which is as sum and average. So what I would like to do is kind of take a sum, uh, this returns the sum and the number of elements. So using that, I want to get the sum and average for that. Maybe I rename this function to fx, right? So then I apply fx to L1 list. So same result. So now I write my stat function like that. In the stat function, I say, I take a tuple two items, both the uh, integers, sum, and the total number of elements. This is my tuple, both the uh, integers, then transform to this. We take the first one as it is, that is basically sum. The second one should be average. Average is one divide by 
to then I can transform to double so then I can call now step function with fx and l one sorry bracket missing see it returns the sum and the average so take fx function pass to the step function it returns sum and the average that's another way of doing the same thing why I do all those things to give you idea about map and reduce so that this method we can actually use to do various interesting things so assume we have a huge text file now we want to find it out how many words what can you do using this method we discuss we could do it easy. So assume we have a very large text file. First of all, I want to count the number of like words. First of all, I have to read the text file. So for that, I create a maybe file F file one. I want to create it using Scala. I use from file, and then I need to give a file name. Actually, I have a sample file in my current directory, and I want to it as UTF 8 UTF 8 character and get lines I need to give like that. Hmm. I know such file in the directory. I need to put this sum, uh, sample dot scala sample dot uh, txt. Right. So I open a file reader to a value called file one okay so after that let's say i want to count a word in this file for that all the files what i do all the files i divide into the list of words. For that, I create an anonymous function called words. Words, which which do this. Why? file one dot flat map what is the difference between map and flat map 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 the kind of elements to the other elements using a function flat map also do the same but they flatten the map. that means if you create a list of lists let's say and apply flat map instead of list of lists is created flat list so it's create a flat list 
So in this nightmare function, I say, uh, take all elements of this uh, map, let's say line, and transform to lines dot split using space. So if there is a line, here we create the lines, which lines in the file, it create a file. And then after it create a file, it take each line of this file and split using space. And then each words in that line will create a list. And then it will have a list of lists. So then using flat map, this list of lists will convert to a single list. That is word list. Words list, right? So when you create four words, it may create a word list. Now I want to get the kind of uh, total, like number of words in that. For that, I use the previous technique we use. I each word I map into a tuple word and tuple this word and one other elements that is one. So I create maybe a tuple called T1 with those words. Words I map now. Each word I map into a tube. So I take map and take each word x in that list and transform into a tuple called x and one. So then what I do? I create uh, file input reader and read that file each line and transform that into a list of words. So from that list of words, I transform to the list of tuples, each word and one, each word and one. So when you want to see the results, I type T1, so then you might see what's happened as the result of those operations. G1 is basically non-empty equation. Right? It has words map to this. Right. Now what I would want to do is count number of words. That means I could count those ones. So I want to get the number of words then. This map I created that is called T1. I read it. I say T1 radius to take each element of the pupil and transform to nothing because I don't want to do anything with, with the first element. In the second elements are the ones I add them to the I, I X two X two plus I don't two. Plus 
thank you. So you see, it tell me the number of words in this file, 1315. So that what it how it works. So you get confused the logic. Let me show you one by one each step and the output. So it's created file. Yeah. And then it split into the list of words, and then this list of words map to a tube. So maybe I will show you the final output here. So using Y, I say Y. Uh, I write a while loop to show the result of this. I say while and T one yes I print one. Next. So you see what I have is list of two. Each word with one. Each word with one. Like that. List of two. So using then reduce method, what I do is I add all those ones. So it tells me the number of words in that file. So like here. I open a file and then I divide into words and then I transform to the tuples and then I add those tuples together, right? Using this at those tuples. Let's write that. Add those tuples. T1. Use XY. Each, 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 each X and Y. Take each X and Y. Each two variables. And then reduce to MT and x dot two plus y it tells me how many words i hope you understand the last now Assume you want to calculate the letter. Letters. So how do you do that? to do that we follow the uh, same thing same structure first of all I will write a function Count a letter 
in a given stream. So I write a function, say LC, letter count, anonymous function, which take any character yeah. and uh, string as input and then transform it to a tuple which says this x letter has this amount of count. So in the string has a method called count that take a function input. So I say, I pass string x to the count function. The count function take a functional literal, which return here. So I say count all the letters, underscore all the letters in the string equal to x. x is given here. Right. something like this. So when I call LC function and want to count letter A in word called consume, you see LC function will return letter A is once. Let's say I have this. Uh, like that uh, and call it so you see it's correctly count a uh, three letters and maybe n one so you see my lc function here correctly count the letters in a given string now I want to find the letter count in that file. So what should I do then? I get this file open with four lines and make a single string out of that using string function. So it creates a single string with entire file. So then in this string, I transfer into a character array because this is a character array. And map that into the pass that letter count function into the map. So then I can find it out, count of letters, let's see. So then I say in this file one, this thing. So I transfer file one to the distinct to character array and map it with letter count function letter all characters and my file one. D I S T I N C D I S T I S T I S It tells me 
a letter comment. Letter A has this much of times, space has these numbers, and two has 10 times. Letter W, this time, this much of time, like that. So letter E is usually the most frequent letter in English alphabet. It has 893 of So this function here basically counts the number of letters in this given file. Similarly, if you want, you can change this letter count function to the count the number of words in the given file. So we can follow the same steps. So I create a string out of the file. So then instead of counting letters, I want to count the word. So for that, I need to divide this string into the list of distinguished words. So that I write a function maybe called fs, which take the string s as an input and transform that to s dot with its space let's give me the words this is list of okay? so i map that into maybe all letters into to no case otherwise I may not be able to properly map this. I split that string into the letters, list of letters, uh, words, sorry, list of words, and convert each words to the lower cases. So I can then compare them, Com compare the equality. So maybe I try my fx function with some string. So you the output of that. So you see. So when I pass that, it will transform to a it has a list of words. So if I transfer fx to apply fx to this string file one now, let's give me a list of words in this particular file. Then what I would like to do is to find it out a given letter, how many times appeared in this string. In order to do that, maybe I write a function called fy. Uh, which take a string uh, array of string array of string and the letter which I want to search is input 
and transform that to uh, use the filter. A filter route is S. My filter is X transform X equal P. That means I check filter route P appears in X and I pick only that. So if I have now this file string and apply my F5 function to that file. So I need to apply Fx function to break into the words like that. This fx break into the word loop. So I take this and apply fy function and pass fx. And let's say I want to search for maybe letter called z. I pass let's say and to f1. So it has array set one, right? So maybe I search for a word like uh, horse, maybe more than one. So you see, it returns me an array after filtering out. So this is the number of boss appears in this text. So if I want to then count all of this, I just want to get the size. Uh, word count. So maybe I write a function, word count equal, it says takes a string array. May I modify this function? Now I write a word count function which take a string array as input and the let word I want to count as the second parameter transform and I, I transform it using a filter method transform into the another array using a filter method. So that create a list of word, uh, array of words which is in there and I take the size of it. So that tells me how many times that word appears. So now, if I want to count number of words, so I can say word count this, word count of this. So it tells was appeared 13 times. So actually length of this. So if I want to search count another word, maybe like, uh, service, how many times appear in this? I type here service. So it's only once. Uh, maybe between like the word, who like words perhaps should have more than one time, I guess. Four times in this text. You see, we can do test processing tasks. So that's the kind of uh, advantage of using this functional programming language in big data processing. So we can use map reduce filter like functions to process a huge number of data. So maybe we can write a word count function which count the entire frequency of words in this string. How can I do that? Maybe I can write a function, word count function, word count x will count 
all the word frequencies. So I pass a string s to that function. And I transform to the frequency list or tuple. So what I would like to do is, so s, first of all, I need to do is split it using space. That's give me the list of words. Then I map it each word uh, to lower cases. Lower case letter. And then I uh, then I move them root by and then ten t so that it move together individual meters and use the function for map values and tells each word map with size hmm. a split and then map to the lower case So lower case C A S C lower case then lower I I then T T and then map values. every element of size split map group by map values right Now I can pass x function to my string. It is tile one. If it is, you see how many words each word appears in this text. This is first one time. One hundred appears once. Fourth appears one, like that. Side appear two times like that. Let's create map. So you see, there are very interesting functions available in function and programming language. Using those functions, we can process the data even in the huge documents just writing few lines of codes or integrated each functions each other okay i stop the demonstration here and would like to ask you to implement the my other example c is a cipher example by yourself as exercise so I will post that to the LMS. So you do yourself and try to implement the CC cycle yourself. Thank you very much. So you have to practice those uh, by yourself, trying several times to get familiar with map, reduce, filter, flat maps, group by 
and so on. All the interesting functions available in a functional programming language. Thank you.